Well, I don't know where Doug is, but we'll just say too bad. All right, then. John's giving me the move the show on. <laughs> show must go on. Hi, everybody. I am Luke, and I am a Brian maniac. No one says hello. <laughs> okay. Well, here's what we're going to do. He got it. Um, we're going to go through really briefly the most vague, basic, Brian May-style sound setup we can do um, for your bedroom, which is uh, an AC30 cranked all the way up, going through an attenuator um, with a treble booster plugged in and a red special. Um, the treble booster we're using is Genesis in terms of Fryer. So this is the January 97 prototype Fryer treble booster, which he made with Brian. Uh, anyway, that's what we're going through. This eventually became the Touring booster, and uh, let's try that out. I'm going to hand over to James Chen for this for now. Okay, everybody. So what we're going to start off with is uh, a stock. It's a regular AC30, right? And uh, let's see, we've got the input going in, we've got uh, the volume on normal turned all the way up, and you have all the tone controls down. Is that the way you want it? Yep. Okay? So let's go ahead and just take a listen to that. And I want you all to notice that we have a real Peterson strobe tuner, which is what Brian used when he was out on tour. Okay, so that's the, uh, and which version of the AC30 is this? TBX. TBX, okay. So that's the treble boost version of it. Now what we've got next, and here, wait, let me move these aside. The next one is the uh, Brian May AC30. And you can notice on the top of it, all that we have is a single volume control. Now the other thing that this amp has is it has a built-in boost, which then works off of this foot switch. But since we've already got a treble booster in here, there's no need to do it twice. So let's plug this in. Yeah, so we're not running through the attenuator, so this is going to get a little louder. Yeah. Turn that channel down. Okay, and that was the, that's the Brian May AC30, which they don't make it anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he ever did use it out on tour. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing that we're listening to is the D key. 
So this was made by Knight, correct? And uh, on it, it has this power supply, and you can vary the voltage going to it. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and play a little bit through that. Can you turn that up now, John? Can you turn that up a little bit? What amp was that? That's the D key. That's the D key and the, uh, the battery simulator was set to about... Uh, about 7.5. Yeah. I've heard a story about this amp too, that it's not just the amplifier, but it's how they recorded it to get a lot of these sounds. And somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard that there's a coffee table that has a velvet scrim around it, and on the coffee tables are markings for different microphones and where the mic should be set up. Is that correct or incorrect? So there's lots of different ways they've recorded it over the years. So uh, anyone that's been around on the forums for a while has seen, um, like, what Jim thinks one of the theories. There's another one that they have a glass coffee table that they like to record it on. We've also seen it in a bin, so in like a metal trash can. That's probably better for, <laughs> for the the audience here. Um, and then recently, in recent years, Nigel Knight has created a a plinth that it sits upon, so the original amp sits on the plinth and it has, um, like, basically protects the amp in case um, power going through it and it, it's got the ability to record itself and then be fed back into it and it's just become a much more usable tool in the studio. So Brian can now record something and they can push it back into the D-key and then they can take it somewhere else and recreate that noise later rather than having to go straight through the D-key and using it and it's protected and it's a, it's a lovely bit of engineering by Nigel from Kat, so Nigel Knight at Kat, who designed this. And then we can't talk, talk about the Deakey without also recognizing what John Deacon did with it. And the story is, is that it was this radio that was found in a dumpster, basically. And John took it out of the dumpster and used some of the circuitry. And I've heard it was a super scope radio. So it's, um, is that correct? So the, they found so a chap called um, Yuri, if anyone's around, remember, somehow got hold of some of the po pictures of the original um, circuit board inside the Deakey amp and put it up on a forum, an antique radio forum, and found that it's actually the internals of a supersonic PR-80 radio from Rhodesia. Um, so then a chap called Manuel An Angelini went and took, found an original from Rhodesia, a couple of them. He's... Um, then found out and done some research. It's all on the forums. I actually found some photos from the people that ran the factory of those amps being made going into to radios. A couple of people in the UK have been lucky enough to find one on eBay. Um, a chap called Mark Reynolds has the original speaker cabinet with the ELAC tweeter and woofer in, and then a supersonic PR-80. So he has arguably the brother or sister of the original Deakey amp, and I believe he's 
shown it to Brian May and they're arranging meeting up so they can compare the differences later this year. Interesting. Okay, uh, let's move on then. Okay, the next thing that we're going to listen to is the Vox VBM-1. <laughs> Okay, so here, let's uh, turn the volume down. Okay, so those are the four different amps that we had to show everybody today. Oh yeah, he's just gonna play again. Just, this is Luke's uh, homemade guitar through, th through the original AC30. Okay, so this is a stock Brian May guitar. And actually this one just came over from the UK uh, from now. And it's missing the tremolo arm. Nice, and those have the, uh, just the regular uh, pickups that they're putting on the Brian May guitars now, and they're no longer made by Burns. And then this last guitar that we're gonna show you, this is uh, one of the uh, conversion guitars from RS Conversions from our good friend Woody out in New Jersey. And uh, he worked extra hard to get this guitar out here for the Vita. But it's got all the stock pickups on it. He changed the uh, tuners on it, so it's got the Perloid tuners. And if you want, you can take a look at the, uh, we put the uh, clear plate on this so you can look at the tremolo with the parts from Ron Smith. So. But the switches and everything else is all stock. stock BMG pickups. Am I the only one that hears the difference of the tremolo conversion versus the... No, you're not. We're talking about that right now. It's night and day. It is. Yeah. And, the, and um, is it, it's, what is it? What's the sound you're hearing? It's, uh, 
I don't know if I can go on the record, but I, I think that you know, Wilkinson sounds a lot woofier, stouter, almost like standard strap trim. Yeah. You know, and uh, I think the the roller trim. You know, you're you're hearing the vibrations on the string vibrate differently from the roller trim. Uh, so we're just talking about the same thing. <laughs> Well, and don't forget that the cavities are different on it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There because Woody does fill it in, right? Where the old tremble was used to be. Right. Yeah, well, he has to open <laughs> the back one for your part. So one of the other things to notice, if you look at the Woody conversion versus the, um, the BMG, if we hold the two up together, where the bridge sits and where the pickups are spaced is different. Yeah, sure. Right. So that's going to make a massive difference on where it's picking up the harmonics. Right. When Luke's got it in phase together or out phase, because of how the bridge is, the pickups can't be exactly as they are in the original. So it's going to right. make a big difference tonally. So I would probably put a lot of it down to that as well as maybe some of the other other changes. That well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the pickups are the same. Especially on a 20, 24-inch scale, any movement is going to be. That's going to change, but also uh, the the action yeah. and the setup of the pickups, how close they are to the strings, it, it's all placed together. And I don't know if these are set up anywhere nearly the same. Right. So, that's I mean they are the same pickups. So, mm -hmm. um, there is one other guitar we're going to try, and John's going to talk about it. Hello, everyone. Hello from the UK. Hey. hey. <laughs> Luke's going to play. Um, so what we have here, so first of all, thank you everyone for allowing us to come. Um, it's really nice to be over here and to be present at the first US Red Special Meetup. A meet such a fine audience of people. Um, we probably ought to thank him at the end, but whilst I've got the mic, I want to say thank you to Luke for putting this all on, because without him, none of us would be here. Um, and thanks everyone for coming too, because you know it's great to actually put some faces to names from the, some people that you know listened to, spoke to, read forum posts for years, finally getting to shake people's hands, not catch coronavirus, and um, <laughs> and see you all, which is great. And then we've got an absolutely fantastic range of stuff. But what I want to talk about right now, it's Doug Short has brought with him all the way from Scotland, is the Andrew Guyton Red Special Transporter guitar. And why this is special is this came around from um, a chap in the UK called Martin Pitcher, who um, loves Brian May. He's actually, if anyone has heard Bri uh, Brian play, if anyone has heard Martin play, he's possibly one of the most similar style and sounding Red Special players to Brian himself. If it, it's, I think it goes without saying. And Max 11, yep, and things underneath. So Martin had this idea that he wanted to travel, or he travels around a lot. And he has a guy in red special, and he th thought it'd be nice to have something that was easier to transport. So Martin came up with this design. He sent it to Andy Guyton. Andy looked at it. Um, it was pretty busy, so he didn't have any time to do it. And in, I think it was 2017, Andy had a look at it and got back to Martin and said, yep, we've got sign off. We can start building these things. So Andy went into production making 25 limited edition um, RS transporters, and in every way they are designed to be and sound like the Red Special guitar. So um, the construction has been designed to mimic as best as possible with not using block board and necessarily all the correct woods as close as possible to the Red Special. Um, so the neck is mahogany with oak fretboard. The neck is exactly the same size as the Red Special neck, so if anyone wants to know what it feels like to hold in your hand, Andy's used the exact same specification he used. Um, the body is mahogany, but it does have chambers in it to make it sonically the same or similar. It's also got oak inlaid in the middle, and it has um, pine, I think, or plywood. Pine, pine, pine inside for the pickups to mount to, just the same as the original does, to try and mimic those son sonic responses and reverberations. Um, it has six switches, like the original, but they're push buttons, which I actually find easier to change on the fly than using the sliders. Um, it has three Addison or Addison Guyton Spec Trisonic pickups, so they are arguably the closest pickups you will find. A chap in England called Adrian Turner bought the original Fenton Whale from Burns and makes the pickups. He's 
took samples of original pickups, took them to Bath University, they analyzed them, they told him what magnets they were, what metals are in them, and he's had it all replicated. So they're, they're the real deal, they're as close as you can get. Um, and then he put it together with this J Custom headless, so it looks a little bit like the guitars from the end of Bill and Ted. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Wild Stallion! No, um, <laughs> wrong audience. Um, he then spoke to Nigel Knight at CAT, who made the Deke amp for Brian and for all of us, and is heavily involved in all of Brian's setup and rig. And Nigel created this custom PCB that sits underneath the um, scratch plate that houses all of the wiring for the switching and also has a built-in CAT treble booster with this nice shiny red button. So, John, do you, want, do you want to mention that Brian actually uses one as his warm-up? Yeah, so Brian, um, Andy made one for Brian as well. So throughout this whole process, Brian was signed off on it. And um, Brian actually has a red one that Andy made for him. And Brian uses that one to warm up every night. So the, Brian's transporter now goes everywhere with him. So he's got something to warm up on. So you see it in a lot of his Instagram posts hidden in the background as he's warming up. So it comes with proper, proper I don't think the right word. Brian likes it. That's the, probably the best thing. So Luke's going to play through it. So arguably it's as close as we can get to with Andy's input, having analyzed and worked on and repaired and restored the original Red Special. So Luke, over to you. So I think, um, like, come and check it out because it, it, like, you put your hand around the neck and you can feel how big the original was. I think Andy's got about four of these left to make, and then the run of 25 is gone. Um, they're about four and a half, five thousand UK pounds, um, and they come in a lovely case, which Doug's got everything over there. But check it out; it's really good, and as you can hear, it sounds just like the real deal. Put a bow wrap on the uh, outer face. You can fancy it, Lou? I'll try it. Well, just, just demo the other phase. <laughs> So we're just going to unplug and turn off a second. Then we're going to move over to the Cat Trouble Booster, which is the same booster that's in... Yeah, we are really low on the, um, the attenuator, just so we don't all have bleeding ears at the end of this. Um, so one of the things I think that stands out from, for me for playing a Guyton guitar is the outer phase tone. Um, I've been really fortunate enough throughout the different meetups I've been to and the people that I know to have played a lot of Brian May Red Specials over the time. So I played KZ's... Dan Sands, Burns, BMGs, home builds. And one of the things that is really hard to get right is that out of phase screamy tone, which I think personally, and you can all disagree with me if you want to, this thing nails properly. Um, it's hard to describe really. I keep looking at Doug because Doug should be nodding. Uh, I'm no on my converted strap too. A nodding dog. I know Doug. Doug So that's the Guyton transporter all the way from Scotland, UK. Thank you very much, everyone. So we're going to break now. Now's a good time for me to hand this back to Luke to tell you what's going on. I think we're going to eat. Is anybody hungry? I could use some food. All right. Well, that's the first thing from the first meetup. All right. Woo. Thank you.